Welcome back dear students. So in this class we are going to revise the chapter 1 crop production and management. So before seeing this video you need to refer all the videos of this chapter crop production and management. So all the videos are there in our playlist. It is there like part by part. You have to read it in a sequence. So after looking at all those videos you need to come to this video. So here we are going to revise the chapter in a brief. So here what we have discussed, we have discussed about the food is necessary for all living organisms. So why food is necessary? As I said, food is necessary to obtain energy. So when we eat, then only we get the energy, isn't it? So when we get the energy, we can do so many activities. So even cell functions also requires energy. So in our body, we have so many cells. So each cell doing their specific activity, no? So all those activities requires energy and the energy is obtained from food. So that's why it is necessary to eat the food. Then how the plants will get food? Plants will get food by synthesizing their own, isn't it? So plant can synthesize their own food by photosynthesis process that you have learned in your last year, isn't it? So, okay, this is what the necessity of food. Then what we have discussed agriculture, how the agriculture is introduced and why the agriculture is necessary. Yes, we have to fulfill a large population. That's why we require a large population in order to provide food for the large population. The large amount of food should be grown and it is not only that growing the crops. With that, we have to manage it. Isn't it? So, regular production, proper management and distribution of food is necessary. So, how we are growing the food, how we are growing the crops, with that management and distribution, storage, all these things matters. So, that's why we have to learn this chapter and we have to learn about agricultural practices. Let us see. So, we have discussed about agricultural practices. And the rainy season in India is generated in June to September. 
is a blue and what about the flower crops flower crops are grown in winter season is it so these uh, crops like uh, pea mustard gram lettuce all these are grown in winter season then what about summer so the crops which are grown in summer season are called side crops z a i d side crops so side crops are grown in summer season so what uh, crops are grown for example fruits and vegetables you know that watermelon uh, so all these uh, you no know, more number of fruits and more number of vegetables are grown in summer season so this is about the types of crops here i have chapter on the even kali crops and jati crops for your reference i am telling side crops is also one type of crops which is grown in summer season this is for rainy season kali crops and jati crops in winter season and zaid z a i d zaid crops in summer season so this is about the types of crops now let us see agricultural practices to do something we have particular rules right so when you come to school you have prayer first then after the first prayer then after the second prayer like that we have a particular setup to grow the crops all of us in the plant will not raise up and stand like that there is some necessary things we have to do to grow the crops so here there are so many steps so according to it should be like first thing preparation of soil second thing soil third adding manure and fertilizers next is irrigation next is protection from weeds and next is harvesting then storage so this is a it should be in this sequence only then only the plant will grow properly so this every farmer will even if you want to grow a crop or if you want to grow a small plant in your garden then you also follow the same step as see preparation of soil when you want to grow a plant you will collect some of the mud isn't it so you will collect the soil and you will sort out if any big stones are there you will sort out isn't it you will take out that and you will prepare the soil if the soil is very hard and rigid then you will make it loose isn't it so loosening of the soil then after if any big big crumbs are there means a big pieces of soil so those you will crush it out and you will level that soil isn't it so that is what we have discussed in the preparation of soil so in our preparation of soil what we have discussed so here before growing a crop one of the most important task in agriculture is to turn and loose the turn the soil and loose it so this why we have to do this it allows the roots to breathe easily even when they go deep into the soil so when the roots starts to penetrate deep into the soil so it requires a loose soil then only it can penetrate well so it can uh, go deeper and be deeper and the plant will become strong and here that's why it is it has to loose up so we have to loose up the soil so that the plants will raise up well because the uh, roots will go deeper and deeper and that will helpful for Uh, even for uh, improving the soil organism, soil organism as we have discussed, uh, earthworms and microbes which are present in the soil, which will make more fertile the soil, isn't it? So this is what the earthworms and microbes will grow more and more when the soil is loose, isn't it? So even that will also help in even turning and loosening the soil. So preparation of soil is necessary. So in that. the first step is loosening the soil then how to loosen the soil uh, which two ways you could loosen the soil yes that is flow flow is that the process of loosening and turning the soil is called flowing flowing is nothing but tilling tilling and flowing both are same this is all we have discussed okay so to do that turning and loosening the soil we require flow so actually in preparation of soil we have two steps one is loosening the soil another one is leveling the soil okay here flow is a tool used to turn and loosen the soil so that looks like 